to meet your eyes up 2000. Bobby's mama and that other lady were classy enough to go to that man's apartment at 2 in the morning. Oh, man. Uh, that thing was really sad, man. It was great to see. Um, and it was funny to see Avon, the dude that played Avon Barksdale in The Wire. It was, it was funny to see him as their their uh, their uncle or Ronnie's uncle and their manager, uh, their choreographer from the very beginning. So last night I did see the tail end of this at the, at the very end where they were on the uh, new edition um, tour, the 25-year anniversary of new edition tour, which I actually saw that, that concert here in Atlanta at Chastain Park. It, 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 was co- it was cool when they were redoing the video for If It Isn't Love. That it was cool that they did it exactly the way I, I thought they did a really good job, man. I still haven't seen the entire last episode. I thought they did a really great job. Yeah, I thought they did a really great job, man. Um, from Clay Clifford Davis, Michael Biffins was always a hustler. You knew he was going to be the richest out the group. Yeah, clearly. Even when they were little boys, they talked about them and, you know, Michael Bivens and trying to make money and and uh, different stuff, man. It, it was it was very good how they did it, man. From KB Fly High 3000, OAL, I love you, squat, man. Real talk, I just have been a Kevin Love fan uh, or haven't been a Kevin Love fan since y'all gave him that money. I'm a fan of you, fam, but hell to the no for Kevin Love. Uh, not a fan of Kevin Love. From Coach Noy Bramble. He says, I read one boxing contract and thought I was learning a new language. Could only imagine what they look like. <laughs> Can you imagine the bullshit in that contract in 1978 or whatever it was when New Edition came along? And those young, naive kids, once again, not less sophisticated parents, single parents, single mother parents in the projects in Boston. You know, they showed that, that scene, man, where it, it, we're going to give you $500 a piece. Sad. We're going to give you $500 a piece. And they had thought they had won the lottery, man. And it was real funny when they bought them all scooters. <laughs> they bought them all mopeds. And if you grew up during my era, any kid that had a moped, that was the lick. That that, that was the lick if you had a moped. Uh, and so they bought them all mopeds just to appease them, make them shut up. We got mopeds. We got $500. But they didn't understand the whole thing about recruitment. And the fact that every penny that the record label pays for you. You got to pay him back. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. From Grego, was everyone on you guys' timeline posting about every scene and reliving their childhood while that Jackson 5 movie was on? Are you, are, are you trying to be funny? I'm talking about New Edition. Uh, yeah, the, the New Edition, the movie uh, over the last couple of days has definitely flooded timelines, man. I mean, I mean it's, a, it's a great story, man. I mean, it's a fantastic story. I mean, a fantastic story. It's very funny how they continue to show Bobby whenever the manager, Ronnie's uncle, <laughs> whenever the manager talked about them being a team and a group and how there would be no individualism and there would be nobody trying to hog and, and steal the spotlight, they just focus the camera on Bobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just focus the camera on Bobby. Like, Bobby had this evil plan plotted when he was seven years old that he was going to take over the world. Yeah, from ducking and dodging in the chat room, almost every unsung episode I've seen contains a segment where the artists got screwed over in their contracts. And a lot of times, man, they, they basically blackmail you to a degree in the very beginning. If MCA or any major record label comes to you and you don't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out and you're seven, eight years old and they're telling you they're going to give you money and they're going to make you rich and famous, you're really not in a position to say no to anything. Because in your mind, in your mind, you're saying if I don't take the deal that they're giving me, I don't have another deal ready for me right now. It's not like there's a bidding war most of the time in this scenario. So... As someone, once again, that's that's unsophisticated about business and how unscrupulous business people are, you sign it. I mean, what, a moped and a, uh, someone said a Betamax machine and 
Five hundred dollars is more than I have if this guy walks out of here. So yeah, I'll sign the damn contract. Really, really sad. What you could do though is, and this is where a lawyer comes in at, is you put in provisions that if we pass certain goals or we achieve certain things, then then we get one of them escalators. You know, we have some escalator clauses in our damn contract. Yeah. We'll take this deal. We know the deal is shit, but we'll take it right now because we ain't got nothing else. But if we blow up, then you got to there and apply some of these escalators. Yes, sir. And the moms didn't do none of that, man. Bless their heart. <laughs> Bless their heart. At least if you had a lawyer, man, look at that second contract if you're new edition. They could have put some escalators in there, you know. They ain't have nothing, man. They just they just doo-dooed on them damn kids, man. And it's sad. It's I mean, it's just, oh, man, every time I think about it, man, and when they show that damn scene where the mama, <laughs> I think it was Bobby Mama, because she was the most outspoken one, uh, which Bobby Mama was, was – uh, it was a little dude with the with the with the bunny tail and, and the wire, <laughs> Neymar. Um but she looked at that damn check, and that check's at a dollar fifty seven, and I think they had to split that five ways. When she looked at that check, man, I promise you, man, and this is this is another reason why I wasn't part of the group after about two or three days. My old man would have been tipping over some damn tables. And they were upset. But my old man, first of all, I don't think my old man would have got snookered like that. My old man always had a business sense about himself. Um, but you bring a check to me that we got to split five ways, $157. My old man going to start the shooting. <laughs> Ralph Stewart going to start the shooting. Yeah, yeah. Ralph Stewart would have got the shooting. No, hell no. Hell no, hell no. A dollar fifty seven, man, that thing was sad as hell. From R. C. Grego, I sure did. I come from a huge family, so when Tito got his ass whipped, I can remember being in a room with my brothers and sisters when one of my sisters got whooped, but we didn't cry like them Jackson boys. We were laughing our asses off. He's telling a little profound story about his childhood, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. From Sidney Jackson, Doug, if they didn't get any money from the first contract, they couldn't afford a lawyer to look at the second one. I'm laughing, man, but I guess technically you're right. But I think somebody would have took it per, uh, what's that term, when a lawyer does the deal, you know, in advance. You know, and you, 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 you set up a deal to pay him later um, or, or, or on retainer or whatever. Maybe that's not the term, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Where they just basically do the law, the the the, uh, the work for free, and they get paid later from your proceeds. They could have done that. They could have done that, bruh. From Ghost of Eddie Long, here we go. And you listen to the Doug Stewart show. From the Ghost of uh, Eddie Long, he says, "Ninja, the devil gets a bad rap. He's really cool people." Uh. Man, it's really awkward when, when Eddie Long, uh, the ghost of Eddie Long, says things like that in the chat room on Spreaker.com. From KC, the moms of New Edition was just trying to get more cigarettes, man. They were just, oh. Man. You're, you're trying to be funny, and that, that's not necessarily true. Their main thing is they were trying to get out of the projects. They were just trying to, you know, change their station in life. That's all they were trying to do. They just didn't have the business acumen. To figure out that they were getting got. You know. Poor people. They just don't have the resources. Uh, they don't have the background man. To, to, to fool with. Once again. Scrupulous unscrupulous businessmen. Tycoons. You know. Imagine your, your mama. You from the projects in Boston. And Roxbury or whatever. Orchard Park. Whatever their, or, uh, their projects were called. Imagine your mama trying to negotiate. With, a, with an unscrupulous businessman. Like Donald Trump. Going to get crushed, man. It's really sad. From Clay Clifford Davis, I'll tell you what, say what, you say what about Joe Jackson. He wouldn't have gotten got no siree. And I'm sure the Jackson's contract probably wasn't the best, once again, because they didn't have a lot of negotiating room and negotiating with whatever record label they were. 
But I'm pretty sure Joe Jackson got some damn uh, attorneys to come in and put some second eyes on it. You better believe that. You say all you want about Joe Jackson. He bust that ass, but he was about his business. What up, Falcons? He says, those ladies were some damn smokers, Doug. Let me, let me ask you a question about that. Me and my wife had that conversation the other night. So in episode two, <laughs> on episode two, there was this scene when they were about to sign a new contract, I think it was, before they realized they were about to get shammed again. And it was the moms and all of the, the kids in this one room. This is when they were a little bit older. Were they smoking weed together with their mamas? Or was those just cigarettes? There was a scene where they were drinking alcohol and like everybody was smoking. They were passing cigarettes back and forth. I don't think that the moms were smoking weed with the boys, with the sons, were they? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah. They were some smokers, man, but I thought they were smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I didn't think they were smoking weed. You make that seem like they were smoking weed. From team broadcasting, Brooke couldn't even afford the S at the end of his name. <laughs> the guy's name was Brooke, not Brooks. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, very funny, I thought, too, was this cat that played, um, or, or, or Big Worm playing this dude, uh, what was his name? Maurice Starr. If you go and look and Google Maurice Starr, the real Maurice Starr was an artist, and the real Maurice Starr used to also wear captain's uh, gear, like he was a captain in the Navy or something like that. Really, in real life. A real character. Uh, funny stuff. From Kania Small, Birdman at least gave the hot boys calls. <laughs> Damn. From Can We Fly High 3000, the Jacksons got a great contract, but Joe was in charge of the allowances. Right. Yes, sir. From Coach Noy Bramble, Mickey Garcia fight should be interesting. From team broadcasting, uh, the Mandalay or the Mandela move comes on, or Mandela movie, that's what he's trying to say. The Mandela movie comes on next week. More damn commercials. Definitely can't wait to see that, man. Hey, let's get out of here, man. When Tupac was around, he wanted to raise the nation of thugs. But, uh, yeah, I think it's only right for me to raise a nation of brothers. Uh huh. Frank Cole earns justice. Hey, thank you so much for joining me on the Doug Stewart Show today. Another fantastic day. Thank you so much for joining your boy. Hey, listen, become a premium member very, very soon. You will have to be a premium member to listen to the Doug Stewart Show all three hours. It's coming very soon. Go to the DougStewartShow.com. It's a little blue link. Become a premium member. Also, right now, in the meantime, between time, be able to hear all three hours of the Doug Stewart Show from every day, Monday through Friday, at your leisure, and episodes of Chop It Up. All right? Support me, man. Support your boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Are you not entertained? You know you entertained. If my product was some bullshit, I would understand, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. Hey, shout out to Waterhead, Walter, Paul Politikin, Brandon Butler, Dwayne Vassan, Gerald Oliveri. Thank all you guys for all that you do. No mistake. God, I put you first. See, I know my place. Uh, special shout out to my man, Pink Gator. We gonna hold it down. For this hot track. Frank Cole. Yeah, and a special thank you, man, to all of the Stewies. Without you, there would be no me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Headed to South Carolina to put Uncle Ray in the ground and see him off, man. Going to see Uncle Ray off. Be back Monday, same Doug Stewart time, same Doug Stewart channel. Be careful out there on them streets. Peace. <laughs> Oscar Cooper, Echo Love, four founders, sons of blood and thunder. I'm wrecking for the cue, I know we make you wanna. Frank Cole.
movement. Earn this chest.